reality. Oh. <laughs> We're recording this meet. Feel free to turn off the camera and mute yourself. I, I can That was a picture that I shouldn't uh, allow to be broadcast, actually. <laughs> it's not my picture. Danger of picture backgrounds. Well, Lana Tony shared it with me with the understanding that I wouldn't pass it around. Ah, uh, it's a beautiful picture. It is. You should just watermark it. I don't, he usually just doesn't share it, I don't think. I was working on something with him. Elizabeth, you should mute yourself so we can all hear you laughing. Hey all, so we'll be getting started as soon as uh, Rinpoche gets on. I, I often wonder whether it's better to show my video or not, because some teachers like to see who they're talking to. I think he likes it. Also, I like seeing all of you guys, so. A little FaceTime is fun. I'm a little too scary, though. I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, you're not, Greg. <laughs> I scare myself. Let's put it that way. So. <laughs> I know that feeling. But I'm also watching the, watch the Walking Dead while we're waiting, so that's kind of fun. So that could have some impact. But you can stay on dark, then you bounce me out a little bit, you know? <laughs> All right, we'll stop my babbles here.
Hello. Good evening, Rupeshe. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Great. 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 Okay. So yes. So we'll start. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, hello. We can hear you, but we can't see you, Rinpoche. Okay, just can you get me the one second? Hello. Yes. Mm, no. Can you see me now? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Very good. Very good. Okay. So, mm -mm. yeah. Mm, okay. Mm. Okay. Last time we are talking about that. Uh, <clears throat> completion stage of the Vajrayana. So now the upon the completion stage of the, sorry, the Vajrayana. So today, so may our thought to talk about, they are the one very secret and uh, very popular of the uh, highest the Vajrayana practice. So they, it's called as the six Naropa Yoga, six Naropa Yoga. So I will explain a little bit about the introduction. I'll give the in the six Naropa Yoga. Okay, six Naropa Yoga. <clears throat> if you don't mind, can you give me the one minute? Sorry for that one minute. Just give me a minute. Okay, I'm very sorry. There is some, yeah, okay. Okay, so yeah, now the, today we are talking about that the uh, highest yoga tantra, they're the practice called the uh, Six Naropa Yoga practice. So today I thought a little bit explain about the Six Naropa Yoga practice. Now the uh, Six Naropa Yoga practice, the first practice, first of the Six Naropa Yoga practice, it's called the uh, yoga of the inner heat or yoga of the psychic heat, psychic heat or inner heat, okay? So 
psychic heat or inner heat okay so that is the thing uh, yeah so that is the what we call the uh, uh, yoga of psychic heat or yoga of inner heat okay inner heat okay so that is the mainly the practice it's about that the how we can generate the inner heat that means the how we can generate the heat inside of the our body i think you might have seen the lots of the information or documentary or clips about that the inner heat inner heat is a mainly there are the two important things about that, that this practice the first importance is this practice is that to generate the some sorts of the heat very strong heat inside of the, our body even the weather is a very cold or so even in you are in the very very cold environment so that we call the inner heat okay the first practice is a practice of inner heat okay inner heat okay so that the inner heat practice that is the normally the first point second point is that the purpose of the, this practice is that the, when you practice the generate that the strong heat inside of the your body that will not only the generate the heat in the, our body what will do is that that is not only the generate the heat in our body that is the that is the uh, you know, that is the uh, that is the most important thing is that that is the one uh, not only the generating heat inside the body one important thing about that is the that is the bring the more bliss in the our body when you are generating the heat that heat will generate very such a very strong of the bliss inside of our body the bliss that is the main point after you generate the bliss inside of our body then the we can activate the clear light consciousness clear light consciousness means a very very subtle consciousness like in the like in the usually in the psychology they say that the conscious level subconscious level unconscious level from the vajrayana there is only two level one is the gross level one is the subtle level gross level and the subtle level subtle level means that the, we call that the clear light consciousness that clear light consciousness is the, that subtle consciousness very powerful very strong very powerful and the very strong that consciousness that can what it can do is that the, that can that can what it can do is that that can generate it the very i mean the strong that can generate the with that when you generate that, that consciousness the clear light consciousness that consciousness is a very strong very sharp then it can the things very differently not like right out of the normal state okay so that it's called the uh, inner heat that is the first practice of inner heat okay inner heat we are talking about uh, among the six narupa yogas no six narupa practice the first is we call the inner heat okay number 1 okay inner heat now the inner heat that practice is mainly now the normally that it says that the inner heat practice normally first whoever start it takes the one week to get it there the one week normally when we teach that inner heat we do the one week and the last i mean the maybe use back i did that what the workshop of the inner heat so with the participant and the, i told the who success that practice i told them that the, i will put them in the very cold room where i will put turn on the all the ac and make it weather very cold the temperature very cold then i want to see that the how can how can they generate that the heat inside their body to check that i told them there also i will soak with them with the wet i mean the cloth 
see the, whether they can dry up that clove. So, but a participant might be get scared and I think they never tried hard. So, so no one came forward. They're saying that it is six feet now. <laughs> anyway, so so my point is that my point is that so this is the normally the we one week we have the training mostly take the one week. Before that, we had to do some of the like a physical some trainings like a similar little bit like a uh, exercise yoga exercise but the difference is that then we have to learn how we can control the inner energy and the, how we can that we have to learn the practice with the energy okay and so that is the preparation for the inner heat then we will teach the inner heat meditation it will normally inner heat is for the one week to practice intensive practice for the one week so in terms of practice, and then maybe they will see that whether really they are on the track of the generating the inner heat or not. And after the one week, we will know. So this is the, okay, the, I'm, I'm just giving the introduction, okay? And I'm not going very deep in the points, okay? This is the, okay, the first Naropa Yoga, it's about the inner heat, okay? Now the second Naropa Yoga, it's about the clear uh, yoga of the clear light. Yoga of the clear light is the, that the clear light is the, that Yoga of the clear light. That is the clear light consciousness. Clear light consciousness is right now, whatever the information we are getting, right now, the whatever the, we are learning, we are learning through the this gross consciousness. Gross consciousness. Gross consciousness means uh, what means the uh, gross consciousness means uh, the, right now. Very simple way. If I tell you that, can you learn something in your dream? Can you learn something in the dream? It's very difficult. If you have to learn something, if you go to the bed, then means when you fall into sleep, then the, when you had a dream. So even in the dream state, you will learn nothing. You cannot learn. So why we cannot learn in the, in the state of dream is that we are not having this gross consciousness. The most important thing is that we should, uh, that what we have to do in this practice, we have to learn something or the very subtle consciousness, subtle consciousness that we call that the clear light consciousness. Now the thing is like that, clear light consciousness, when does the clear light consciousness comes? In the few occasions, the clear light consciousness appears, okay? When we are falling asleep, before you fully go to the bed, before you fully fall into the slam, sleep, so fall into the sleep, that moment, the clear light consciousness appear. Like a, you can, you might hear something, but you will not hear very clearly. When you are falling asleep, you are in the half state of the half sleep, you might heard something, but not very clear. But you will know there someone is talking, but not that clear. That the moment like that, the slowly the clear light consciousness is uh, rising but the, we are not used to use that clear light consciousness. So that's why that the, we miss that the opportunity. So this is the moment of the one time when you fall into the slip, the clear light consciousness. Another thing is that no, no. normally when the persons are dying and the state of the when the death, the clear light consciousness comes. So these are the some, this is the time that the, no, so that's why the some people, they start to learn the clear light consciousness and try to, when they're falling asleep, they, we can learn that. You, when you fall asleep, you try to see that the, how the consciousness, gross consciousness slowly become a very inactive. First, you might hear something slowly, you will lose the hearing the things. That moment you have to look and the see, look at the, your own consciousness, look at the, your mind, okay? That's we call the practice of the uh practice of the clear light. This is little bit because the this is there, this is sometimes that persons, the practitioner have a good excuse to fall asleep. So they were all when they fall asleep, they sleep and they were saying the oh I'm back to practicing the clear light consciousness practice. Yeah. <laughs> because the Miller River great master, he said the one thing, whenever I sleep, I practice the clear light consciousness. Whenever I sleep, I play the consciousness. So that's the one. I was very young. I think I was maybe in the teenage time when I was, I was sleeping quite late in the morning. Then the one time that was I was at home and my father came and told me, now, Rubuchi, you should wake up. So I just said exactly the same as the 
Miller remembers the saying that the, when I sleep, I practice the clear light consciousness. My father told me the one very funny thing. Oh, Rumbuche, isn't it? You're boosting quite a lot, <laughs> exaggerating quite a lot of your sleep. Yeah. So, so when that is a clear light consciousness, like like that, when you're trying, this is a moment you have because that this practice is even you fall asleep. You have to learn that uh, how the function of the, your consciousness, how the gross consciousness and the settled consciousness, yeah, that is a function, okay? That is a function, how you can do that, okay? Mm. Okay, clear, no? Mm. Mm. Okay, so that the consciousness, okay? Uh, okay, gross and the settled consciousness, okay, clear, no? Mm. Mm. Am I... Am I clear? No. So that's a second point of the okay, clear like consciousness. Okay. So now the the now the second thing is the clear light -like consciousness. Another thing is that a little bit complicated way about a clear light -like consciousness. The most complicated way is the clear light -like consciousness is something like that. That, uh, that is a when when the persons are dying, when the moments a person are dying that time the clear light consciousness appears. So now I think that you can search into the one article. It's a very interesting article. And the article is a Berlin scientist found the life after death. You can just type like that in the Google and the, you will find a very, very interesting article. Berlin scientist found the life after the death. And they, what they did is that they, the scientists did the one research and the, they, they just killed the, some of the volunteer participants. Kill means are just killing for the 10 to 15 minutes, okay? They just introduced the clinical death. They killed completely for the person for 10 to 15 minutes. Kill means are they just block the function of the brain and heart for 10 to 15 minutes. Later, then again, they bring it back, that function. So they're trying to see that their experience, how they experience for the death, for the short-term death, no? 10, 15 minutes death. But the, for me, it's a very interesting thing is that they shared the experience that of some kind of the feeling, the joy. That is the exactly mentioned in the Vajrayana. Before the clear light consciousness rising, there will be the joy. Moment. So when the person who person when they are dying, no natural death, even they are having the very strong pain with the with the very chronic disease, and they died with the pain. When their death process start, they will lose that pain. They will start to feel the joy, very peaceful. So if you go and the talk with the people just before the dying, mostly ninety nine cases, they will say they feel very peaceful. But slowly, when they lose that the power of the element, we call the power of the element, slowly when the gross consciousness stop, stop the functioning, then you will lose the, all the pains. Feeling of the pain will you will lose. Then you will start to feel the joy or peaceful. So that's why the, that is the first the indication that the, now the clear light consciousness is arising. So that's why when you're falling asleep, exactly when you fall asleep, you will feel very relaxing and the joy. Person who cannot fall asleep is that they cannot relax their body. Mind and body cannot relax it. When you are over, when you are very sad, you cannot fall asleep. When you are so happy, you cannot sleep because mind cannot relax. Over, I mean, the, when you are very sad and very happy, both, it will lead you to, to the insomnia. So that's why the, but the here the, here that the one you are, what's the, here, when you are the practicing the clear light consciousness, as clear light consciousness will come when you have a, some kind of the breeze in your body or the feel the joy, then the clear light consciousness comes. The, as I mentioned the before, at the person, at the time of the, when they are dying, then the clear light consciousness will arise. That time the clear light consciousness arises and the, some people in that state, they can meditate. We call that the death meditation. When the clear light consciousness, they will remain in that state a few days. I think you, you can search into that's a lot of article they wrote in that. They, they wrote an article that reason they in the South India, he stayed in that state maybe more than no, 14 days. 
even the after the death, 13 or 14 days, their body will not get decay. And the, even the body will not get smelt. So this is quite common. So thing, and also now there are a lot of the researchers doing on that field. They are how, and they also see the brain functions. And they are no heart function at all. But one of the, in the, that's quite long back. I think that was a maybe 10, 12 years back. So there's a one scientist and I talked with him at that time. He was in the South India, in the monastery, and he'd done the research on the one like that master who passed away. And he was telling me he can see the sum of the some partial brain function. So then I asked him, the, what do you say about it? So he told me it's too early to say. Because if you look from the science point, they need a lot of like that cases, no? So then only they can come with uh, some conclusion. So they need more. They tell me they need more like that people. So, so that means that more people have to die <laughs> the meditate <laughs> for to get the, some of the scientific report and the scientific conclusion. No, so yeah. Anyway, so that's a yeah. So that is a, I'm talking about the second practice, the clear light consciousness practice. Okay, clear light consciousness practice. Now the clear light consciousness practice is that the what you can do is that the state of clear light consciousness practice that in the you can just just exactly very similar when you are falling asleep when you are falling asleep when you are falling asleep it exactly very same that as the, the death procedure will be same as the how you fall asleep when you're falling asleep first you will feel a very relaxed your body will get relaxed your mind will get relaxed then slowly then you will fall then you will see the darkness no the clear light consciousness <clears throat> Hey, rise after the when you are having the seeing like that darkness, then the clear light consciousness comes. Okay, the it is same as a death procedure. Okay, so now the second practice is the clear light conscious, uh, clear light practice. No, the second. Now the third practice is the third practice is a very complicated practice. It's called the practice of the illusory body. Illusory body. It's a very complicated practice. <clears throat> Illusory body practice is something like that. Okay, now things like that. So illusory body is a very much from the Vajrayana when they talk about the illusory body. It's very complicated, uh, complicated practice. So before that, I just want to ask you the one question that uh, uh, mm, mm, uh, have you watched that movie called the Avatar? Someone told me, okay, I'm not, not watched that, but someone told me this is a very much idea related with the illusory body. Then I watched the maybe 10, 15 minutes, and I thought, wow, that's a, I could not continue the movie, you know? So, but that seems like a quite similar, illusory body is a, something like how we talk is the body. Right now we are having the very physical body, that a physical body. Now the, to understand the illusory body, first we will in the from the Vajrayana, they talk about the different kinds of the body. Now that's like a first, this is the physical body. We all know that there is a no, we have no doubt about this body. Now, now there is another body we call the dream body. In the state of the dream, in the state of the dream, when you are saying that we are dreaming, when you are saying something, Actually, we say that we are having the dream body. Dream body is a something like that example that I will tell you the one thing that happened, happened with uh, on my experience that the one time we and the one of the senior monk, he now he passed away. That's a very long back. We went to in the Nepal to the one mountain. Mountain and the once we reached there, he was telling me that exactly he saw that in the dream. He saw that in the dead dream, and the, his that time that we saw the one person who was carrying a lamp on his head. He told me exactly he saw that yesterday. The person who was carrying the lamp, and it happens not only to that many people. So it happened what you see in the dream, and the next day you will meet. After the six months later, you might meet, or years later you might meet them. No, it happens quite often. So now the here comes the question that how it happens, how it happens. So that's why it's saying that the dream body is a something like that. In the state of dream body means in the state of the dream, we are we can travel with that dream body. We call that a dream body. Dream body. Okay, that is a dream body and the we travels. So that's why the sometimes in the lot of things happen what you see in the dream, it happens, no? 
So that's why the segment friend paid too much importance for the dream. He says that every dreams have some magic. But uh, that that is a totally again the, his own uh, his idea and uh, his thinking. So my point is that the, now the dream body. After that, now the illusory body is a, some body that the, which we when we practice it, then we can have another body that called the illusory body. How it happens the illusory body? Okay, illusory body it can happens when we practice when we meditate and when we practice and uh, when we can generate the very subtle our body energy when the energy when we can activate when we can control the our body the energy that energy can transform and be take into the one body that we call the illusory body illusory body is a very techno that is i'm not so sure whether it's a translate very properly or not but don't think that it's some kind of the matter okay it can't be the matter okay it, that energy have transformed into the such a into the one body, illusory body. So illusory body, that illusory body means a very total, it is some sorts of like a very strong energy. Energy, but take as a shape like a body, okay? Take a shape like a body and the illusory body. So that means that the, that is the practice, okay? That is the third practice, okay? We talk about illusory body. Now the idea is quite similar, like an avatar movie. The person can have the two body, you know? that have the physical one body and the one other body. That is idea is a very same, the illusory body when the practitioner, when they have the two bodies, energy body and the physical body. So that's why it's saying that their lifespan will be the very long because they don't depend on the one physical body. They have the two bodies, like an energy body or the one, the physical body, like exactly like a movie, like Avatar. So someone told me that movies look like that. Then the, I watched and I could not watch that quite long because uh, I don't, I cannot watch that the fiction movies. That's very difficult for me to watching the fiction movies. Yeah, so that is the one thing. And another thing is that the Matrix. Now that is a very famous one, Matrix. There are many similar ideas of the, this. Again, the, these are the Vajrayana practices and they just get in there. Someone told me that the mat. Matrix and the Inceptions, these movies, no? So anyway, so this is a, something like, a, I can't say this is a scientist science fiction, because so I will not say these are science fiction. I will say that this is the Vajrayana's, I mean, the ideas, no, Vajrayana, these ideas. So, so yeah, so this is something, yeah. So now we're talking about the third practice, not what was the illusory body, okay? Illusory body, third practice. It is like a more like an energy body, okay? Now the for that, okay, what we can do is that, okay, for that first step is the, first thing is that what we have to do is we have to understand that the, whether we can have that energy body or not, first we have to understand that our body, the energy, okay? The power of the, our body energy. Body energy is a, something like that, okay? Now, one thing, I'm not so sure it can be do this on that, okay? So this is, can you see me? I'm not so sure, I will try, okay? I will try and maybe I will, can you all see me? Hmm? This is something, like, I'm not so sure whether, uh, this is first I'm trying to do something on online, okay? So, okay, now what you have to do is that, okay? Uh, I'm not so sure to do that. Can you give me a second, okay? Okay, can you see me clearly? I'm like, someone have to talk. Okay, so I can hear. Okay, can you see me clearly? Yes. I never done this, okay? So in the online, maybe it may work and it might not work. What you have to do is you just focus here, okay? Only just pointing it, just focus here, okay? Just focus and the, try to see the sight of the mind. Can you see something like a white light or the aura of my body, around my body? Yes, it's easier online, Rathisha. And Can you see it? You have to focus here, okay? Focus here. Yes. This point, focus here and they're trying to see something like white lights and the aura. Can you see it? Yes. yes. Okay. Now comes to the point. Okay, great. I never know that it works online. Yeah. 
Now, the, what you can do, the experiment is that, okay? Now, you ask to the, your family members or the friend to see that how big is your aura, okay? Do it, first measure it. Then the another day, you morning, you meditate, okay? Well, meditate, keep your mind as calm, compassion, meditation. Do the meditation and ask to see whether it changes. 99% it change, aura will change. After the meditation, okay? Hello. Now this, you do the experiment, okay? Hello. Hello. Sorry, a lot. <clears throat> yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, okay. So this, yeah. So this is the, it will change the aura. aura it will change after the, doing the meditation, okay? Doing the meditation. Now this is the first point, okay? First point. That the first point, the how that is the whether this are the they are saying it's related with our body energy. So that's why have you heard that the Buddha says having the ray, when they call the six feet, the aura is a huge aura Buddha is having around the six feet, the aura. But I think that my aura might be hardly maybe six seven centimeters might be, mostly people six seven centimeters like that. Buddha is saying that it's around the six feet, whatever. Whatever, but the point is that the more interesting point is that the, you just ask to someone to see your aura, then ask to someone to see after the meditation, especially like a compassion or the, all the focusing on the breath, or, because when your mind gets relaxed, then you will see that your energy or the, the aura will be more brighter. So that you do the experiment, okay? Then let me know, okay? So the first step, okay? First, that is the first step, okay? So now, before we're going to talk about the energy body, okay, first I'm talking about that energy, okay, number one. Number two is that, the number two is that the normally we should know the one thing that the, in our body, we have to know the one thing is a body, we having the sometimes that the, when we are, sometimes when you feel the stress or the depressed, there are many reasons that the, how we are feeling or like, there will be the, not only the one cause, maybe the several of the reasons, okay? Several of the reasons. And the one is also related with the sometimes when we are not having the enough of the positive energy in our body, we will feel very lack, lack of the positive energy. It shows that we are very tired to do the things and we will lose the interest to do the right many good things. No? So when you are not having the, uh lots of the positive energy so that's why the what we can do so you can fill up your body with the positive energy so that's a filling up the body energy you when you meditate you just think like a buddha or the avalokiteshvara or manjushiri buddha whatever thing and uh, just like a white warm light filling up with your body from your crown okay meditate and trying to Meditate and try to visualize that you are feeling with your body with the white light. Okay, feel the white light, hold your body feeling with the white light. After doing this meditation, now the what you have to do is so you will see that the what kind of the body sensations what you're having it. Okay, after you visualizing the body feeling with the white light, no white light, do you feel like a, some sensation on your crone or this part? Okay, that is the your crone. Okay. Crone part, do you feel? Some people feel like a warmness. Some people feel like a itchy. But whenever you feel something, don't think that now you have reached very close to the Buddhahood, okay? Don't think that, okay? So some people, whenever they have some sensation, feeling, they might get very excited and, and they tell me, wow, I feel like this and that, okay? This and that is not, doesn't mean that now you have become the expert or something, okay? So, but I want to, because this is, the, I want, because you just observe that. I want to see the effect, okay? This is the effect, no? This is the effect, okay? So now the, what you meditate and think the white warm light, just entering from your crone, okay? We crone and the feeling of your body with the with the whole the white light, okay? White light is coming from the Buddha, white warm light, okay? Feel of your with whole body and then visualize that your body is all filled up with the white light, okay? Very warm white light, okay? Meditate that. Then you have to observe that, uh, observe or see that your sensation, especially on your crone, okay? This part crone. Crone, not touching your crone, okay? Whenever you touch your crone, I'm sure that you will feel something, no? That is a very normal, okay? 
without touching your crown and after the meditate or something do you feel something okay like a itchy or the some sense mostly it come like a itchy warmness or the, some like a feel like a ear movement some things are coming in and out the moments of the ear moments of the wind i should say the wind in and out that is very common okay because this this two point why i'm saying is that this is the how we can do something with our body energy okay changes of our body energy okay two points okay this week or the now the next two weeks no next two weeks this is your homework and let me know okay and you try to ask someone to see your aura or okay aura is a, you have to stand on the white wall and the ask someone to just focus on this point like a, like a half feet a hit focus in it sight of the their eye can they see the some of the white lights okay white light and the more i think that it will be more accurate if you stand on the one same wall at the same time okay if you stand on the morning 9 am tomorrow exactly do the same time same location same person same distance okay then it will be more accurate no so so same <clears throat> that you do as the experiment okay experiments and they do like experiment and then is a one is a meditate and uh, get the uh, warm one warm, warm visualize that uh, warm i mean the light entering your body okay that second point okay now the third point is so we see the observing the energy in the environment that might be little bit difficult to show you in the uh in online but i will try what you can do is to see the environment the energy because the energy is not only inside of our body energy also flow in the room so that's why have you heard that uh, chinese they are very famous the feng shui feng shui means that they will do the lot of the changes of the room even not only the chinese indian also have called the vastu vastu and the chinese they do it they trying to change the you know, they are the changes of the environment outer environment to changes of the positions of the tables of the room i mean the furniture or like that way here the vajrayana practice is not like a changing the things from there changing from the our insight i mean the changing from the, our meditation through the change change the outer energy through our meditation okay so now the first thing is to hear the how we observe the energy of the environment so that's the, what you have to do is a, i i'm not so sure whether i can introduce very clearly what you have to do is a, you have to look outside will outside and close your eye how and trying to see that there's some kinds of the bubbles of the like a water bubbles can you see like that like a, some kinds of bubbles i don't know what the term it's called in english half close your eyes and trying to see like a some kinds of the shade or like a bubbles or like that more inside is a very difficult you should see the in outside and especially in the sky or like that can you see that bubbles of like that am i clear i'm not so sure whether i because even this we don't have that terms in tibetan what you see that no? some we say like a water bubble in tibetan like a like a shade or like that no small 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 like a like a small like a water bubble can you see that but you can try it okay you can try <laughs> but the inside it might be a little bit difficult like this okay half your close your not close your not close your eye fully just half close and uh, just like look okay then you might see some like a shades or the some like a bubbles or like that hmm if it shows that tigley yeah tigley? some so, yeah tigley we can yeah 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 like a, yeah yeah small small don't yeah tigley yeah yeah term this Dirk, Tibetan term is a very tricky no sorry i was just wondering if dirk knew the english word for something that was similar what what do you say if there was an english word for it for tigle like so if dirk knew um some uh, kind of translation yeah tigle this term is a very tricky because the this term is sometimes is called a dot like a dot it can be the dot it will also the tigle and also it will be like a essence it's going to be all the tigle also it's uh, also it can stand for the human the simon 
also the thing like this the uh, word terms into the many i mean the tricky and the many the many meanings of this word so now the here seeing like a dot dot on the way we can see when like they like a dot dot when you half close your eyes and seeing like lots of dots no okay so anyway this is a third point okay that's you can third point and you can try okay later on you can try that okay third point okay now now we'll come back to the point of the that okay now we'll come back and we'll talk about that <clears throat> we are talking about that uh that uh, the illusory body no so the that is the third practice of the naropa yoga no illusory body illusory body is a more like an energy body so before that energy body we start i, I just gave a, like a small homework for the two weeks what you have to do okay small homework okay <clears throat> just checking on your the energy or the, your aura okay aura is a very related with the, our inner energy okay check with your aura and uh, meditate that the white light coming in from your I mean, the crown and the feeling of your body okay then the third point is so what is third point yeah third point is so, yeah observing the outer energy you no know? close your eye not a fully half close and to see the environment and to see whether you can see that like a dot 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 or the like that shade you no know? bubble shade or like that okay okay that's the three points okay okay so maybe what will i do is so today i will stop here i will leave for the few minutes for the question and sessions if you have any questions okay so today we finish about the three points of the six naropa yoga okay inner heat then the clear light consciousness then the third is a illusory body no energy body i will say like an energy body okay third points okay the mainly the energy body is a something very when you reach that when you can achieve that the energy body or illusory body you should be the practice very long that is a very high practitioner so they can achieve that state main purpose of achieving that state is a, <clears throat> then they can life span will be very long with that long life span the purpose is then you can benefit the most sentient beings and help the most sentient but that is the main purpose Because every of the this practice motivation always should be the body chitta to benefiting the all the sentient beings, benefiting the and the helping the all the sentient beings. That is the most important. Every of the Mahayana practice or Vajrayana practice, the motivation is the most important part. So if you have a very long life, if your lifespan is increased. If you cannot benefit the others, that is not that much of the use of the that long life. No, if you can benefit the sentient beings, if you can help the people, then you are having the long life and your lifespan is increased. Then really very nice. No, then you can have the very good life. No, if you look at the people who are saying the who had a very good life, it means you, most of the people who are saying they have a good life, that means that they have done many good things for the others. So when we are person who are complaining lots of the their life, if you look them mostly because they think for themselves too much. When you think for ourselves too much, then we have a lot of the complaint to the our life. Then we have to complain a lot because then we'll come. I could not get this. I could not got this. I lost this and a lot of things. When you're thinking for the benefit of other, you spend the life with the thinking, the helping other and the benefiting the others. More compassionate way life, then you will feel that you had a very good life. So that's the most important. Okay, the motivation. So that's why it say the body chitta, no, in the yap in the Buddhism practice. It's always saying it is very important. Okay, so that's why the now when you are doing the this all practice, think that the whatever you have the good things that you have, main purpose you think that to benefit other, to have the your families or neighbors or the whatever. Okay, so that you need the motivation. Okay, most important the setting up the motivation. Okay, then you try to do that. Even when you having like this kind of the motivation, body chitta, no, benefiting the all of the sentient bit, even it can affect a lot on your aura, so the your energy. Okay, okay. Now I will leave for the few minutes for the yeah question answer session. If you have any questions, yeah. Hmm. Ah, uh, Rinpoche. No. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear. You. Yes. Wonderful. I'm wondering if um, the illusory body, the dream state body, if it usually resembles the human body you're in now, or does it? Well, it resembles something different. 
Uh, can you, I could not get you at the later point. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering what the illusory or dream body, what it would mm-hmm. resemble. Does it usually resemble the person's human body or would it resemble something completely different? Okay. Now the energy body, okay. Dream body, it's a, uh, dream body is a very different and the energy body, what an illusory body is a very different. Illusory body, it's a, looks like a, like a, looks like a, our physical human form, looks like it, but it is more or it's like a energy, it's sorts of the energy. So it can travel very fast. It can travel. But our physical body, we cannot travel that fast as the, our energy body. If you look at the dream body, also it can travel. Dream body will travel. When you are, when you are seeing, when you are dreaming the something, that time that you are traveling with the dream body is a traveling. With, you are traveling with your dream body. When you are. And uh, that's why in the dream yoga, in the dream yoga practice, I, yeah, that's why the, the dream yoga practice that uh, we told that uh, with the, when you are dreaming something, you just motivate to go to the place you have not visited at all. Then see that the, what you see in the state of the dream, no? In the practice and dream yoga, in the state of dream, when you realize that you, you are dream, then try to go to the place, visit the place where you have not I mean, the visited at all. Yeah. So anyway, so that's why the dream body is can travel and the illusory body also can travel much faster than physical body. The illusory body have the shape it's mentioned like our physical body. It have a shape. It have the shape. That is the one thing. Second thing is the illusory body is uh, not like a dream state body. Dream state body is a very temporary, very temporary body. When you are dreaming and that you are having that dream state body, when you wake up, and then you will lose that the dream body. But illusory body is like our physical body. It is not a temporary body. It will it will have a very very long I mean the lifespan. So they are saying the hundred or hundred years it can live with that illusory body. Yes. Any other questions? Why is it called an illusory body? I say, yeah, because the, it's an illusory body, because it is a not like our physical body and uh, cannot be seen by the everyone. Illusory body can be seen by the person who have achieved that body. So that's why it's called the illusory body, like an illusion. Illusion can be seen by the few people, not by everyone. So that's why it's called the illusory body. It was seen by, can seen by the only who have achieved that body. So that's why it's called the illusory body. Yeah. <laughs> Any other? Yeah, on the uh, the inner heat. Yeah. Oh. The uh, nine breaths is that part of that? Uh, nine breath uh, breath is uh, more like everything. It's a basic, very basic. Okay, this is the one basic. It's a very important basic. Nine breath. It is started to you are started to learn to control or the started to learn that the, now the how you can use the energy board energy okay this is a basic i should say the basic of the yeah, energy the practice okay okay hmm. remember say when we see the energy in the room and we see the bubbles or the tiglays what are we hmm. seeing are we what are we seeing are we seeing energy or we're creating an okay. image or we're observing okay 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 First, first you just uh, this week you try to see it, okay? Then I will explain after the two weeks later. I will explain it, okay? <laughs> okay. First, first yeah. this week you just see it, okay? When you cannot see, then story will be different. When you can see, then uh-huh. there's another story I will tell, okay? First, okay. you want to see, okay? All right, thank you. <laughs> okay, okay. Any any other questions? Is the illusory body the same body that, like, a dialogue uses? As, uh, same body app- as what? Sorry. Like a, a dialogue? Dialogue? Mm. Mm. Uh, the, mm, uh, not the, really. Not, not the same body? No, not, it's not the same body. In the dialogue, their bodies are like a more like our physical human body. More like it. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Then today we'll stop here. Now that these two weeks you have the homework to do. Okay. You do these uh, three homeworks, and the next two weeks later we'll meet. Then I will talk. We'll discuss. Okay. It's a uh, when you did the homework properly, then we can talk some. But then we will have a uh, some topic or the something your experience we could share. Otherwise, mostly it's go like a theory, theory, theory. No, when you learn the science, it's very important go to laboratory. No, to see the how the results comes. No, this is what your homework is like. Uh, you're going to the, now the lab. Okay, doing the some of the research or some doing. Okay, then after two weeks later we'll talk. Okay. So, but don't think that uh, you should get success. Okay, if you success, very good. If you don't success, very good. If you see, very good. If you don't see, very good. If you experience something, very good. If you don't experience, very good. Okay. Most importantly, if you if you do your homework, that is the best. Okay, that is the most important. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. 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 Uh, just a reminder, guys, real quick, um, two weeks later is Thanksgiving Day, so carve out some time on Thanksgiving Day for that, all right, because we'd love to have another great turnout for Rinpoche next time he's here. Um, thanks for coming. I'm real also, we have lo lunar yeah. practices. I mean, uh, Vajra, we're doing a Vajrasattva practice right after this, too. Yeah. Greg? Um, this is the first time I've, I've kind of got in on this. 